Hello, and welcome back to the Disciples of the Force podcast. Um, Spencer asked me to record an audio message memo thing, so I don't really know how he's going to stitch it, but hello, everybody. Yes, hello, everyone. Um, yeah, well, I'm just going to do as he recorded. So I'm just chopping up and just putting my tidbits in. For the most part, Austin nailed everything I was going to say, so I just threw in some things that I wanted to pepper in. It's going to sound off. It's not going to sound like a conversation because it's literally just cut and copy and paste me going in, but... Hey, that's why we do it for you guys. So enjoy. Start us off, Ost. Uh, I'm just going to go through some of my points from the newest Bad Batch episode that I really, really liked. Okay, first thing, no trust. I love that dynamic. Uh, Crosshair's back. There's no trust anywhere in the Bad Batch. Mostly between him and Hunter. And Omega kind of has to fill in this role of being... While she's the youngest and the one that they've taken care of over the past couple of seasons, now she has to fulfill this role of, like, the communicator and the level-headed one to, like, be the glue to keep the Bad Batch together, which I think is just awesome. Yeah, and I agree with that as well. One thing that I did just, like, I'm curious about is why we didn't get to see a little bit more of the interaction from the beginning. Like, yes, we see they got beef, but I really kind of wanted to see. They left us on that cliffhanger, and, of course, we got to talk about it the next episode. Um, you know, we got to actually see it, but I kind of just wanted to see how the reaction was going to be going into the ship, you know? Like, what? Like, we didn't see any of that. So I was a little bummed because I wanted to see what their first words were going to be to each other. Um, of course, we got the contention, and that was great, but I really was curious to see what those first words were going to be to one another. Also, cool to get Echo back. I liked how he said, depends how good your intel is um, when he first walks up on Crosshair because we know that um, Echo was imprisoned by the Separatists. And after he was rescued, he had significant intel on how to beat them, which essentially within the arc of Season 7 of The Clone Wars got him into the Bad Batch. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, Omega mentions to um, Crosshair that she's older than him. Again, going back on that, like... She has to be the level-headed one, the the adult in the room. Right, which is something I don't think I remember at all. I forgot that she is older than all of them. So very, very interesting um, you know, concept in the show. Oh, great planets. I was a little backed up. I didn't get to watch the last couple of episodes, so I watched last week's today as well and just love the planet design in this show. And I know this is a planet we've seen before in last season. Um but I think that was that was really great too, and I'll I'll come back to that in a minute or two. Um, oh, Batcher has no butthole. I have that noted here. So if you guys were looking for one, he doesn't have it. I looked too. Um, speaking of this planet, this is the place where Crosshair had his like um, come to Jesus moment, or come to space Jesus, come to Obi Wan Kenobi moment, um, where he realized he was on the wrong side of history, and. Um, he turned against the Empire, Empire. so it's just a really cool um, setting for him to come back to the Bad Batch. It's like a full circle thing. Right, and I think that goes along with the fact that it's called The Return. You know, he's going back to where he found all this, where he first realized he was on the wrong side. But yes, I love the you know same thing. I love that he's going back to his roots, basically, back to where it all began. So I think maybe that in retrospect or maybe in subconsciously helps him, you know, smooth things over with hunter storytelling uh going along with great storytelling um that's something this show really achieves that well and i think better than a lot of the star wars shows that we have i was kind of comparing it to ahsoka and i know we shouldn't um or even the most recent season of the mandalorian and i know some of our fans really enjoy those and i do too but there's just something special about the Bad Batch, and I, I wish I got more appreciation. And maybe it's easier to achieve in in animation, and of course it is. But um, they've just done a really good job of taking it seriously and hitting all the emotional notes in between all of the action and the great storytelling. So one of the things I liked was as the tension rises between um, Crosshair and Hunter, we get that like juxtaposition of uh, Wrecker... Omega and Echo, um, Echo sitting in the room like they know something's coming because Batcher's acting up and it's going shot to shot between those two scenes and it's great. The suspension, the suspense builds and by the time it comes to uh, head, we're like on the edge of our seat or at least I was. 
Uh, I also really like the idea that both Crosshair and Hunter have to account for their failures. They both have to talk to each other about their shortcomings and what they've done wrong. Uh, just really cool because at first glance you wouldn't think that Hunter was in the wrong at all. I mean, Crosshair like literally tried to kill him and hunted him down for um, however long he did. And um, it's just really cool to see Hunter like saying that he also bears some of the the guilt in that situation. Um, again, just like the emotional points of this this show are what really do it for me. And I'll, I'll get back to that in just one second. Um, they must have released this episode this week intentionally um, with the ice worm, which they called a worm, W-Y-R-M. Um, because Dune came out last week and there's all this Dune buzz. It just reminded me completely of Dune. Uh, again, I don't know how Spencer's going to stitch this together, but I guess I'll make the announcement now that this is no longer going to be a Star Wars um, podcast. It's going to be a Dune podcast. I hope everybody's okay with that. Um, just kidding. I'm kidding, you nerds. Uh, we'll stay Star Wars because Star Wars is nerdier for you nerds. I just have a really hot case of Dune fever right now. Just saw it the other day, 70 millimeter IMAX in New York City. I'm wearing a Dune shirt right now. I'm going again here in Layton, so in about an hour or two. Sorry. Um, but yeah, the ice worm, really cool. Um, really, it's, just, it's just really funny that uh, there's those comparisons there because everybody knows that George Lucas ripped off Frank Herbert from Dune, whatever. Um, I'm joking again. Sorry. If you listen to this podcast, you know that um, I'm never serious about my hate for Star Wars. I love Star Wars. It's the best thing in my life, other than Spencer, other than my wife, other than my dog. Um, okay, last thing here. I liked uh, the setup between, again, Hunter and Crosshair at the very end, where Crosshair finally pulls him aside and apologizes, and he's like, I thought I was being a good soldier. And again, that just goes back to the motif that we had all of Clone Wars of good soldiers follow orders. Um, and Crosshair, like, finally coming to realize that, hey, being a good soldier doesn't mean just blindly following those orders because he did some horrible things. Revisit season one and season two, what he did in the name of the Empire. It's crazy what it took him to finally come around. So those are my thoughts on this episode. Those are just a few notes. This might get a little lengthy. Um, love you all. Love our fans. Uh, keep listening, keep supporting. Thank you, and send us ideas. Thank you. Bye. Yes, thank you guys, and have a wonderful rest of your week. We will circle back and visit you guys uh, next week when we open up to the new episode. So thank you for being Disciple of the Force.